Today we're going to do a little bit of maths and we're going to ask this question. How can we calculate the height that an object is dropped from if we only know the object's final velocity? In order to tackle this question, we're going to have to think about the scenario where there is a ball and that ball is going to be dropped down to the ground. Now, the ball starts off at that height. That is the height that the question wishes to answer. What is that height if all I know is that final velocity? And there is the ball at the end of its journey. There we go. And what is its velocity? Well, many students have the misconception that at this point there is zero velocity, but that is untrue. We are talking about the moment just before the ball hits the table or the floor. And here is the ball up here. So what is the velocity at this point? It's called the initial velocity, and it is zero meters per second. What is making it accelerate all the way down? Well, that is the acceleration due to gravity, which at GCC we take as 10 meters per second squared on earth and there is the final just before it hits the floor that is the final velocity and that is the maximum velocity and that is what you're given in questions that equate the equations that we're about to do now what equations do we need well we're looking at the energy to start with the equations we've been using for the past few lessons we have here at the top lots and lots of lovely potential energy and then as it goes down accelerating under that gravitational acceleration there we are at the bottom everything's turned into kinetic energy now if we use these two equations together and we equate them because all of the potential energy turns into the kinetic energy we're going to find out how we can work out the height now in order to tackle this problem we have to look at the two equations Firstly, for potential energy, that is the energy that the ball has as it's right up high at that height which we're trying to work out. And the equation for that is, well, the mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by h. That is the height that we're trying to work out. And as the ball falls, everything eventually turns into kinetic energy. And that is calculated by multiplying a half by the mass multiplied by the velocity squared. Now what can we do with these things? Well, if one turns into the other, then they equal. So if I just move that part out of the way, we can say that, there we are, the potential energy equals the kinetic energy. It all turns into it. And if we use the real equations at the bottom of the screen, we can see that the mass times g times h all ends up equaling half times the mass multiplied by v squared. And that's what we now need to use to end up working out how we work out H. So here is the equation that we wrote down. MGH on the left-hand side, that's the potential energy. And all of that potential energy of the falling object has turned into what we see on the right-hand side of the equation. Half mv squared, that's the kinetic energy. Now what's in there that we're interested in? We're interested in that height, aren't we? The height that the ball or the object was dropped from. And all we know is the final velocity, the velocity just as it hits the ground. We don't know the mass, but we do know g. That's a nice little friendly one for us. That's the acceleration due to gravity. That g is worth 10, 10 metres per second squared. That's the value we use uh, at GCSE, and we're going to be able to use it in this equation. But the masses, they're causing us a problem. We don't know. Was it a big ball, a small ball? Who knows? But if you have a look, on both sides of the equations, we see an M. So if we have an M on both sides of the equation, here they go. They're off. They're disappearing. We no longer want them. They cancel each other out. So let's put this together. It's looking a bit more fruitful, isn't it? We have GH equals half V squared. I need that H on its own, and I've actually done my job. Let's have a look at this. You see this one? Well, a half, if you multiply anything by half, that's like saying divide by two. So we can get rid of that one as well. We don't need that. Let's shift all this across here, just so it's a little bit prettier. And we have almost the final thing. GH equals V squared over two. Now, this G, well, that's multiplied by the H. 
So when it comes across the equal sign, it becomes a divider. And again, if I just neaten that up, we have our final equation. H equals V squared divided by 2G. That's it. You can now apply that to an exam question and hopefully get full marks.